and I'm back to reality. Hawaii is now a distant memory and I'm turning my focus to packing up my apartment and preparing for the big move. So today I'm going to revisit my luggage and travel accessories since I've now had the opportunity to try a lot of them out. And I'm going to mention some quick storage unit, health insurance, and mobile phone updates. Okay, let's start with the luggage. First things first, no to packing cubes. I don't know why people like these. I guess because they like to waste space in their luggage, but this just it's so it's so much more efficient to roll up your your clothing and fit it into all the little gaps with everything else that you're packing. So these just left all kinds of space between each cube, so I ended up not using them and we'll probably give them away or get rid of them. Next, the I hit it. Next is the jewelry and makeup holder. This thing is fantastic. I'll include links of all the things that I liked. There'll be, I think, uh, Amazon referral links in the description of the video. But this thing's fantastic. It holds, this is for holding like rings or bracelets and unsnaps at the bottom, as I mentioned last time. I also can put, uh, I put makeup and elastics and hair clips in here. And then all my earrings hung on this piece, which worked out great. Uh, I put makeup in here, and these also detach. So this, this piece and this one can detach, and you can rearrange them or whatever. Uh, and then this is for necklaces. You can see it, there's a couple I didn't end up, haven't taken off yet. Uh, and then another pocket here. So for the small amount of makeup that I use and jewelry that I carry, this is gonna be fantastic for long-term travel for me. The shoe bags were also fantastic. They're, they're stretchy, and like I said, for me, they hold a pair of running shoes or a pair of hiking shoes, or like two or three pairs of sandals. Uh, so for smaller shoes, they hold more. Now, I'm a size eight women's, and so a pair of hiking shoes, I had to cram it in here. Uh, but I was also able to use it for, like, I went to the beach, so I was able to stick my sandals in it and throw my sandals in my purse without getting sand in my purse. So. These turned out to be very useful, and they're a little more expensive than a lot of other shoe bags. They're by Shoe In, and I'll link to these as well. Uh, I mentioned that I have a travel mirror. I showed it last time, magnifier. I didn't end up needing it for this trip because I was staying with a friend, so there was really no reason to have a separate mirror since she had everything I needed in her apartment. So I didn't really get to review that. I'll uh, next time I travel, I will. The next thing is the suitcase. So I did not bring the duffel bag. I wanted, I was going to anyway, even though I didn't really need it because it was such a short trip. But then I decided it was a waste to carry that much stuff. So this giant, uh, this is the BRX domestic roller. And it just has the two wheels. Like I said, I didn't get the spinner because I was told these are more durable. The best thing about this bag is that it's so light. So I loved carrying it. Uh, because it didn't, I crammed it full and it didn't weigh a ton. The biggest downside for me was, first of all, I don't need an outer pocket really in the front. This is a laptop pocket, and I just, I just feel like my laptop would get destroyed if I put it in here and then I checked the bag. It would get thrown around or something would land on top of it. So what I end up doing with this pocket in the front is just cramming things in that I forgot when I was packing. So I may throw in an extra t-shirt or shoes or pajamas or whatever I forgot I end up shoving in the front so it's not the best to have one of those bags to me the other thing is so there are two pockets in the lid I guess of the suitcase as you can see and they're sideways so my old suitcase which was heavier and which is why I, and was getting old um, just had one big pocket it was mesh and it opened top to bottom which makes sense because your suitcase is usually lying flat when you're trying to access it. So I find it really odd, especially since it's not like the suitcase unzips further down. So you can't stand it up and get into these pockets, but they only unzip on the side and it's not see-through. So I packed, I had packed bras and underwear in here and just getting to them was such a pain. So I'm kind of disappointed about that, but otherwise I thought the suitcase was great. Um, this, this compression piece, was useful for keeping everything flat. I didn't bring enough stuff to need to really unzip the compression on the outside and zip it back down. So um, another really nice feature is these are, I think Briggs and Riley is one of the only brands that has 
the roller piece on the outside. And so that is great because it doesn't get in the way of your stuff on the inside. So all in all, I will keep using the suitcase. It's gonna be super durable, I know that. Plus they have uh, free repairs and all that kind of stuff. But this is kind of, this just kind of annoys me, the access to this pocket. I don't know why they designed it that way. All right. So as I said, I'll put a link to everything in the comments. Those are the main things that I used in my trip, so just wanted to make sure you saw what I thought of them. Okay, a couple notes about storage. I called about my renter's insurance. I have renter's insurance since I live in an apartment, and I wanted to find out how to switch it to storage insurance. The good news is they're exactly the same thing. I pay renter's insurance of like a few dollars a month, maybe a couple dollars a month, I think, or something like that. and. It's going to cover, it covers, they told me, whether my stuff is in storage or it's in an apartment. So it's exactly the same thing. So I'm good to go there. I also have reserved my storage unit. Uh, it's going to kick in on September 9th, and I officially move on the 18th. So I have some time to get everything in there. It's $91 a month for a 5 by 15 climate-controlled unit. So my whole apartment should fit in the 5 by 15 with my, I have a king-size mattress and box spring. Uh, and frame. This couch is a three-seater, so it's a pretty standard large couch. I have a couple of bookshelves. I have a dining room table and six chairs. I just sold my desk, which I'm really excited about because it's super heavy and I've had it for a long time. I have two dressers, but I think I'm going to throw one out because I've had it for a really long time and it's kind of falling apart. It was $200 when I bought it two decades ago or 15 years ago. I don't have any appliances. So the 5x15 should work. Climate controlled, as I mentioned, to keep everything from getting moldy. And $91 a month is under 100 which was my goal, so I'm really excited about that. I had to go buy, I bought it on Amazon, but I had to buy a disc lock. So a disc lock is round with just uh, the little opening is just small at the top. It makes it harder to clip, uh, and that's the kind of lock they require. They sold them, they said, for $17 on site, and I, could, I got it for half the price on Amazon. So bought myself a disc lock, and now I'm trying to figure out the movers because it is not inexpensive. There were some Groupons available, but they're only good for within 20 miles, and because of the price of the storage unit, I'm an hour outside. It's like 60 miles outside of the downtown DC area, so I can't use a Groupon, and they quoted me over $700 to move, so I'm gonna keep doing research and see what else I can find. So that's it on the storage front for now. On the healthcare front, that is the biggest pain in the butt. And that Affordable Care Act is incredibly frustrating for someone in this position. I don't think I'm really gonna need insurance for the last three months of the year. Since I'm perfectly healthy, it's exorbitantly expensive, and it's just for three months. But if I don't get it because of the Affordable Care Act, I'll have to pay a penalty on my taxes. And I think it's a prorated penalty, so I would just have to pay it for the three months. But it can be, I think, up to a thousand or twelve hundred dollars for the year so it'd still be I don't know four hundred dollars three or four hundred dollars or something minimum for a penalty which I don't want to pay my current insurance is going to go through the end of the month I leave so I'll have it at least through the end of September that means I at least have some time to figure out my insurance but after September 30th I'm on my own so I basically have three months through the end of the year and then however many days before I take off to Europe to find domestic US insurance I've qualified, I went to healthcare.gov for the ACA and I qualified to enroll in my health plan off cycle because you can only enroll during the open enrollment period once a year unless you have a life change, like you lose your regular work insurance, which is what's happening to me and I'm moving. Picking the right plan is gonna require more of a time investment so that I can understand everything. The cheapest plan that it looks like I can get is $240 a month, which is just absurd because even going to the doctors a couple times, I'm not gonna spend six, seven, $720 before the end of the year in worth of insurance. So yeah, I'm continuing on that, but I actually looked online, I did some more research today, and in Florida, where I'm gonna be living for the rest of the year, they don't, only Blue Cross Blue Shield even offers plans. Aetna stopped offering plans, Humana stopped offering plans, I went to eHealth Insurance, which apparently has the super affordable plans, and they said they, they, they won't offer them. There's nothing in Florida. They only offer short term. And short term is only good for three months, uh, 90 days. And the problem is I will need insurance for just a little over 90 days. It also barely covers anything at all. 
um, and I'm not quite sure it fits the Affordable Care Act rules. So more research is required, and once I figure that all out, I will provide a breakdown to help other people. The, the crazy thing about the health insurance is that when I leave the United States in 2018, hopefully sooner rather than later, so in January sometime, I can drop my domestic plan, once I figure it out, and pick up an international plan, which is considerably cheaper. Now, these plans are not good in the United States, and I will need to be outside the U.S. for at least 330 days of the year in order to not need insurance in the United States. But I think that is doable based on all my plans so far. I went to geobluetravelinsurance.com, which is a division of Blue Cross, and the plan looks to be about $150 a month for healthcare, give or take. I've got to spend more time on the phone with them. There's also things like worldnomads.com, which I checked out, which has travel insurance for about $100 a month. But from what I can tell, it's not actually a healthcare plan. It's just to cover emergencies. So it's not like you can go to your primary care physician or if you get a cold. I don't think it covers any of that, but it would cover going to the hospital for an emergency. So I'm not sure if I really mind not having full healthcare, but at this point, I'm just gonna focus solely on that insurance for the last three months in the United States and the beginning of 2018, since I need to figure out within the month what I'm gonna get. Once I'm down in Florida, then I'll be able to return to figuring out the whole travel insurance thing. So one thing at a time, or I'm gonna drive myself crazy with this stuff. And since I always like to end on a positive note, I purchased a new cell phone. I finally got with the program and got an iPhone. I have had uh, Androids for the last decade or so, but all of my other devices, so I'm filming this on a Mac, I know I need a better camera, I'm working on that. Um, I also have an iPad, so I figured it's actually so far has been great because everything syncs. My computer talks to me, you know, it lets me open my web browser that I have on my computer, it lets me open whatever window on my phone if I want to transfer it. Super cool. I know. I. Everyone probably already knew this a long time ago, but it's new to me. Uh, but the best part of the phone, and I bought this little $10 wallet on Amazon, which is fantastic, and they didn't make it for my Android. Uh, but the best part of the whole thing is actually my phone plan. Virgin Mobile had a special going on where if you bought a new iPhone, the plan is only a dollar for the entire year, and then it'll be $50 a month because it's an unlimited plan. But until next August, it's only $1, and it's a no-contract plan, so I could cancel it and go with something else after it's done. And I did buy insurance for my phone, so I do have to pay $7 a month for the, for the remainder of the year. But as far as my travel budget, that keeps things nice and low, especially since I will have to pay for SIM cards or something once I'm in Europe. So I'm really excited that I was able to save money there. I also went with the older iPhone 6 model since it was $340 with the taxes and fees. The 7 and 6S and all these others were, you know, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars $600. But my pictures, you know, iPhones I think take much better pictures than the Android that I had. So my pictures should be coming out much better now. I'll be able to give you improved slideshows in the next videos as I travel. So with that, I am off to continue packing. Uh, so far, I'm doing pretty well. I've got, where are the boxes? I've got a whole bunch of boxes already packed. There's more in the other room. I found all these boxes, or most of them, in the recycle room of my apartment. I got really lucky in that I didn't have to go pay for them. I ha I've had to do that in the past, and it's not inexpensive to have boxes for an entire apartment, so I was pretty thrilled to find those. So now I'm just filling them up, and I'm actually inventorying everything I pack, so I've printed out a page with all the things in the boxes. I know I'm, I'm a bit uh, anal retentive. Not quite OCD, not really OCD, but I printed out inventory of everything in the boxes, and I'm gonna tape it to the boxes and then keep the inventory, save it on Google Drive or whatever in case I ever need somebody to go grab something in storage. Or when I get back, it'll just be much easier to find things. That is making it take a little bit of time, but I still have actually almost a month before I move, so I've got time to do it. Well, I hope some of you were able to check out this week's solar eclipse without burning your retinas. Here in Virginia, we had 80%. We didn't have totality, but we had 80% coverage, so some folks in our office, we all went outside and checked it out, which was pretty exciting. Maybe I will be somewhere next time we have one uh, where I can see the, the total eclipse of the heart. Uh, but in the next episode, I'll be talking a bit about giving my work notice. I'm doing that tomorrow. And 
more health insurance updates. Hopefully by the next time I will have health insurance for the end of the year figured out. Thank you for joining me and I will see you then.